Hey, this is Presh Tollwalker. In 2018, a mysterious sign captivated the internet and it still makes the rounds from time to time every year. This photo was taken in the dining hall of the Nanjing University of Aeronautics and Astronautics in China. If we sprinkle a little magic dust, we can understand what the question is asking. Students had to solve the following integral and take the first eight digits of the result just to get the Wi-Fi password. So let's focus on the mathematical question. The problem is to compute the integral from minus two to two of x cubed times the cosine of x over two plus one half. We want this entire term to be grouped and multiplied by the square root of four minus x squared dx. The password is the first eight digits of the result. So how can we compute this definite integral? I compare solving an integral to choosing your fighter. There are various tactics you can use. For this problem, it will be helpful to think about the concept of odd functions, as well as using a bit of geometry. So let's get started. The first thing we will do is we will distribute the square root of four minus x squared to both of the terms in the summation. So our integral becomes the following. Now, the integral of a sum is exactly equal to the sum of the integrals. So let us split this up into two different integrals. Now, from the second integral, we can also pull out this factor of one half. So from here, let's continue our analysis. Let's first try to solve the integral on the left. If we sketch a graph of the integrand, we would end up with the following result. And it looks like this function is symmetric about the origin. This is a type of function known as an odd function, where f of negative x is equal to the opposite of f of x. If we have a symmetric function, and we are symmetrically having an integral about the origin, then we can see that the area to the left of the origin, in this case, negative area, will exactly cancel out with the area to the right of the origin, in this case, positive. So we would end up with an integral that's equal to zero. But before we show that's true for our particular problem, let's take a step back and look at odd functions in general. An odd function is defined by f of negative x being equal to negative f of x. What would happen if we take this integral from minus a to a? And of course, we're assuming everything is well defined. Let's prove that this is equal to zero. First, break the integral up into minus a to a and then zero to a. Let us make a substitution that u is equal to the opposite of x. So we substitute that in so that x is equal to minus u, dx is equal to minus du, and the limits of integration change from minus a to a, and the upper limit is equal to zero. We now use the property of odd functions that f of minus u will be equal to minus f of u. So the minus from the f of u will cancel with the minus du. From here, we just need to flip this integral that will flip the sign. And finally, minus f of u du, u is just a placeholder variable, so we will change that with x. And now we bring the sum of these integrals to be the integral of a sum, and minus f of x plus f of x will vanish to be equal to zero. So this entire integral will vanish and it will be equal to zero. So the integral of an odd function from minus a to a will of course be equal to zero. What remains to show is that the integral of what we have will be a function that's odd. So let's say f of x is equal to that integrand. What would happen if we substitute in minus x? Well, if we have minus x cubed, that is going to work out to be the opposite of x cubed. The square of the opposite of x is equal to x squared. And when you have cosine of a negative angle, it's the same thing as the cosine of the angle. So only one of these negatives is going to remain, and therefore f of minus x is exactly equal to minus f of x. So we do have an odd function, so the integral of this odd function from negative two to two is going to vanish and it's going to be equal to zero. So we've eliminated one entire integral from this calculation. 
all that remains is to calculate 1 half times the integral from minus 2 to 2 of the square root of 4 minus x squared dx. But let's graph the square root of 4 minus x squared. So we start out and it's going to end up being the semicircle, which has a radius that's equal to 2. We just want the area of this semicircle. So this integral can exactly be evaluated to be half the area of a semicircle with the radius equal to 2. So we take 1 half, the area of a circle is pi r squared, and since we have a semicircle, we divide that by 2. So in this case, r is equal to 2, and when you work it all out, you're just going to be left with pi. So in the end, the entire integral is just going to simplify to be the first eight digits of pi. How can we remember that? Well, there's a nice sentence to remember this. Can I have a small container of coffee? Count the letters in each word. So can has three letters, I has one letter, and we just continue counting the number of letters in each word. And we end up with exactly the digits of pi. 3, 1, 4, 1, 5, 9, 2, 6. And that is the Wi-Fi password. Now, when I saw this answer, it raised another tangential curiosity to me. Who was the first person in history who could have actually solved for this Wi-Fi password? In other words, who was the first person who knew seven decimal digits of pi? So I pulled up a Wikipedia article on the chronology of computation of pi. I think we all learn about Archimedes, so who around the year 250 BC was able to calculate pi very accurately using inscribed and circumscribed polygons around a circle. He got to a value of 3.14 and the fraction 22 over 7. He knew pi to two decimal places. In China, there was a very different technique that was described by Lu Hui. Instead of using perimeters, he used an area method. Now, he wasn't able to do much better than Archimedes. He got to three decimal places. But this very technique was picked up by Su Chong Chi around 200 years later in the year 480, and he was able to get to seven decimal places of pi using this method. He also wished to come up with a fractional approximation to pi, and he discovered the approximation 355 over 113, which is tremendously accurate. And if you've never heard about this story, you should definitely check out my video, The Mysterious Value of Pi That You Never Learned in School. Now, I was wondering, how accurate was Su Chong Chi's method? Did he come up with the answer and then someone just broke the method right away? Well, not at all. If we take a look at the chronology, we see the next person who was better than Su Chong Chi happened nearly a thousand years later. So Su Chong Chi's approximation was the world's most accurate for about a thousand years, and it was finally broken by Madhava, who discovered the infinite power series, and that completely changed how pi would be calculated forevermore. Now, you may have heard about Madhava. There's a video by Veritasium that actually says that Newton is the one who changed the game on pi, and he's the one who came up with the infinite series. But Veritasium did leave a comment that also shout out to the Indian mathematician and astronomer Madhava, who in the 14th century had a different infinite series for pi that converged as fast as Newton. Now, it's just me. If someone discovers something and then it's discovered 200 years later, I wouldn't consider the second discovery to be a discovery. I consider discoveries to be the first person who discovers it. But in any case, it is well accepted that Madhava is the one who discovered the infinite power series. So I think it's quite interesting that in China, they had a Wi-Fi password that depended on knowing seven decimal places of pi. Perhaps some of the students learned this interesting history, but I'm glad that it gave us a chance to talk about it. Pi works in mysterious ways. Thanks for making us one of the best communities on YouTube. See you next episode of Mind Your Decisions, where we solve the world's problems, one video at a time.